President Joel, Rabbi Lamb, Rabbi Reese, and honored guests, I have the privilege of introducing Rabbi Menachem Penner, Chagas Micha Chairman and Director of Professional Rabbinics for the Rabbi Isaac Alchanan Theological Seminary, who will officiate over the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for just a moment. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the Quadrennial Chag Hasmicha Convocation. This year's Chag is celebrated on the 21st of Adar, the Yortzeit, a Rabbi Yitzchak Elchanan Specter, after who our yeshiva is named. What a spectacular way to honor his memory. With the accomplishments of 200 Talmidim who have completed Smicha. Baruch shehechiyanu v'kiyemanu v'higiyanu l'azman hazeh. Please remain standing for the national anthem, which will be led by Cantor Bernard Beer, director of the Philip and Sarah Bell School of Jewish Music of Ritz. Bishus, my Rabbeim and my mentors who sit on this stage to my side and behind me, it is rather uncomfortable for me to stand in front of you. It is just as strange for the Mesmachim to feel that they are receiving kavod today from you. But if I, along with your many Talmidim, can help in some way to spread your Torah and to uplift your yeshiva, then it will certainly have been worth of it for all of us. It is hard to believe that we've reached this day. For all of us who have been planning this event, the days have flown by. For the Musmachim, many of whom are serving Klal Yisrael out in the field, the years of yeshiva were wonderful but they seem so short compared to what they have ahead of them. And for the parents and grandparents in the room, and I did not, Musmachim, appreciate this when I sat in your seats not so many years ago. For the parents and grandparents in this room, for the parents and grandparents that are joining us in the official Beit Midrash, for the parents and grandparents that are joining us in Eretz Yisrael now watching, from the Yeshiva University Center. Where is the time gone? That little child sporting his first pair of tzitzis, leading Anam's Miros, 
has become a Rav B Israel. Hayinu kecholmim, we have all been like dreamers, and today we awaken to this beautiful simcha. Here we are on the campus of our Bate Medrash, and we exclaim like Yaakov Avinu awakening in his dream, Achein yesh Hashem b'makom azeh, v'anochi lo yadati, maybe I didn't realize what Kedusha was here in this room and in this yeshiva. Vayura vayomar ma nora hamakom azeh, how awesome is this place? Ein ze ki im beit elokim, v'zeh shar hashamayim. This can be none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of the heavens. Years ago, I heard from Rav Lichtenstein Shlita that Yaakov used this double language for a very specific reason. Sensing that he was b'makom hamikdash, Yaakov explains that he had found a Beit Elohim, a house of God, and a Shara Shemayim, a gateway to the heavens. What is the difference between a bias and a Shar? A bias, a home, is used to house and protect things that we already have. It is a place to collect and to guard that which we cherish the most. A shar is just the opposite. A gateway holds nothing. It is but a passageway through which we walk to take hold of things just out of our reach. The Beis Hamikdash served two distinct roles. It was a place that housed Kedusha, where our most precious things could be found, the Aron, the Mizbeach, the Sanhedrin, and so to speak, the Shechina itself was housed in the Beis Hamikdash. But much more than that, the Mikdash was a Shar, a gateway to something more, a place we visited to be inspired, to catch a glimpse of that which was beyond us, that which we couldn't yet be and couldn't yet understand. We celebrate today not a Beis Hamikdash, but our beloved Beis Hamedrash. And our celebration today is of a dual nature. We celebrate, Musmachim, what you have accomplished so far, the Torah you have learned, the Divrei Torah that you said, the Chavrusa that are still echoing off the walls of the Beis Hamedrash. It's a time to mark all that you have accomplished. But more than that, our excitement today is because the yeshiva has served as a shar for so many of you to reach out to Klal Yisrael. We celebrate not just what you've done thus far, but we look out at you, Bli Ayin Hara, 200 young Rabbanim, and can only imagine what you will learn and what you will do in the coming years. Look around you. Look at the banners that adorn these walls. 21 banners that only begin to describe how much you've learned and how many people you have already touched. Look at all the kololim. Look at the educational programs. Look at the phenomenal work of the Center for the Jewish Future in spreading Torah around the world. Look at how much the yeshiva is doing. And look at the scrolls that everyone else in the room has. Look at the scrolls and look at what your chaveirim are doing. 80% of the musmachim before us are in Avodos HaKodesh, and most of them are serving outside of New York. You have been given tools, both in learning and professional skills, unlike any class of musmachim before you. As a major university, we proudly graduate many students with many degrees, and at every graduation, we, along with the parents of the graduates, feel a tremendous sense of pride. But somehow today is different. Because there is perhaps no greater moment for Yeshiva University or for a Jewish parent than to see a student become a Rav. A celebration today will rightly so be something unique. We will share Divrei Torah, we will sing together, and we will honor our musmachim in here in the bias. We will celebrate our past and our present, all of the gedolim who have taught here and who continue to teach here, and all that we have learned from them. And then at the conclusion of the program, we will take to the streets. We will go through the shar that is the front of this hall. We will close off Amsterdam Avenue, and we will rejoice with our future. Mazel tov to the musmachim, mazel tov to their wives, their parents, and most of all, to their very proud Bubbies and Zadies who are here with us today.
It is now my great pleasure to call to the podium the president of Rabbi Isaac Ochanan Theological Seminary and Yeshiva University, Richard M. Joel, who will, who will preside over this, seminar, over this ceremony. Grandparents. Almost 78 years ago, Rabbi Dr. Bernard Revel stood at this podium and said the following, quote, Out of the portals of this sanctuary of the spirit shall come a Jewish leadership, lay and spiritual, conscious of its unique heritage, striving to develop in this land a Jewish life, culturally creative and spiritually satisfying, based on the internal foundations of Torah, helping our communities to fuller self-expression and richer contribution to the cultural and spiritual values of society." Unquote. Still and again today, out of the portals of this sanctuary of the spirit comes a new and renewed generation of leadership. We gather here in New York and in Yerushalayim Irakodesh to celebrate the gift that you are to the world. What a remarkable moment. Thousands gathered together to charge Rabbanim on their sacred mission to celebrate wives, parents and grandparents, children and friends. What a remarkable moment as our yeshiva continues its profound mission of advancing Torah and helping to guide, teach, and lead our people. What a remarkable moment for these gathered musmachim to thank their loved ones for their belief, support, and commitment until this moment and onward. What a remarkable moment to appreciate the support from professors, administrators, trustees, and philanthropists who have contributed to this moment and made it possible. And what a moment to appreciate and celebrate the revered, distinguished, devoted Rashi Yeshiva of Yeshiva Rabbeinu Yitzchak Elchanan, who have taught, guided, inspired, and informed our musmachim and our world, and to thank Harav Norman Lamb upon his eighth Chag Hasmicha as Rosh HaYeshiva. No doubt there will be more spontaneous ruach to come. <laughs> In yesterday's parasha, we encounter what I always felt was an extraordinary exchange. Moshe pleads with Hashem, Vayomer hareni nos kvodecha, let me, I pray, behold your glory. And God responds, Vayomer lo suchalirosas ponai ki lo yirani ha'adam v'chai. He said, you cannot see my countenance, for man shall not see me and live. By Omar Hashem, God says, 
Hine makomiti v'nitzavta al hatzur. Behold, there is one vantage point next to me. Stand upon the rock. Rav Shemshan Rafael Hirsch sees in these verses a master principle of life and for me a charge to each of you. We cannot see Hashem, for it is not the human's role to see Hashem. But God says, Hinema komiti, come stand next to me. As Rav Hirsch teaches, quote, there is only one vantage point, not to look up from earth to God to attain a vision of God, but to be uplifted by God, to stand next to him, to look upon man and human concerns from God's standpoint, unquote. In other words, the role of the human is not to see God, but to see as God sees and to do as God does. As Musmachim of Yeshivas Rabbeinu Yitzchak al you are all in a unique position to teach our people and the world that our role is to strive to see as God sees. We look forward in the Yeshiva and in Yeshiva University to partnering with you and assisting you in this sacred mission, whether as clay Kodesh or as lay Kodesh. We all share a mission to infuse the future with the beauty and sanctity of our Torah values. Our Rashi Yeshiva has served as outstanding role models during your time at Yeshiva. May they continue to inspire you as you blaze your own path in the Jewish world. May you stand with the Rabboni Shalom to ennoble and enable a brighter Jewish tomorrow. These are days of civilizational challenge and civilizational opportunity. And the encroaching noise of mass communication and mass information, when ideologies and technologies scream at us and create a cacophony of ethical and moral confusion, the sweet, strong voice of Torah, the guidance of a compassionate God, and the inspiration of the sacred Jewish journey are more needed than ever. Here and in our Tzenu HaKadoshah, in the marketplace of ideas and values, and in the sacred privacy of the Jewish home, Kol Torah must ring out. May you venture forth as the concert masters of God's chorus. May you script wonderful music, conduct wonderful harmonies, and shepherd the Jewish people forward to a warmer tomorrow, to fashion a Jewish destiny of pride and purpose. May that destiny be rich in learning and in wisdom, in principle and in purpose. And may your efforts bring to our people and the world shalemus and shalom, wholeness and peace. V'chein Yehiratzon. Mazal Tov. Ladies and gentlemen, the Rosh HaYeshiva of Ritz, Rabbi Dr. Norman Lamb, has graced the Chag HaSmicha for four decades with his inspiring Divrei Torah. We are privileged to be able to present to every one of you, upon the completion of the ceremony, a collection of these drushos, published by Ritz and the Lamb Heritage Foundation. Rabbi Lamb apologizes that his voice is not at full strength this morning, but no apology is necessary. As I can say on behalf of every one of us, Rabbi Lamb, having you here today, someone who has presided over the smichas of almost 2,000 Rabbanim, just having you here today, having you sit next to our new dean, and having our new dean sit next to Harav Kharlap, that is such a cause of joy for us to be able to see you all here today. We rejoice with you, and we hope to see you at many more Chag Hasmicha convocations for many, many years to come.
It is now my honor to call upon the Max and Marion Grill Dean of the Rabbi Isaac Ochanan Theological Seminary, Rabbi Yona Reese, to address our musmachem at his first Chag Hasmicha as Dean of the Yeshiva. Rabbi Reese. Thank you, Rabbi Penner. Bershus, the Nasi of the Yeshiva, President Richard Joel. Bershus, our legendary Rosha Yeshiva, Rabbi Dr. Norman Lamb. Bershus, my predecessor, the Dean Emeritus of the Yeshiva, Rabbi Zvulun Chalap, who truly remains the once and always Dean of the Yeshiva, both for all of the Mismachim today and through his imprint for all future musmachim as well. our esteemed and magnificent Moshe Yeshiva, Bershus, our Mashkiach Luchani, Rabbi Blau, Bershus, our dedicated chairman of the board, Rabbi Julius Berman, Bershus, our distinguished honorees, Dr. Herbert Dabrinsky and Mr. Marvin Bienenfeld, and all the other vital and valued members of the Yeshiva administration, faculty, and board, and all of the revered Rabbanim, dignitaries, parents, grandparents, and other family members and guests here with us today. It is truly incredible and humbling for me to have the privilege of speaking to you as Dean of Yeshivat Rabbeinu Yitzchak Elchanan to celebrate the occasion of the largest Chag HaSmicha in Yeshiva history. Just eight years ago, I was present to receive Yadin Yadin Smicha here at the Chag Smicha, and eight years earlier than that, to receive Smicha in Yore Yore. Now, it is my special schus, and really incomprehensible schus, to participate in conferring Smicha upon a new generation of Talmidim. When I look at our new banner system, all of the new banners that proclaim the richness, the breadth, and the depth of our smicha program, I am fortified by a sense of appreciation and awe for the incredible collection of Torah personalities and resources present in this remarkable yeshiva. I wish to express my hakara satov to all those who labored so lovingly and meticulously to make this event a true testament to the primacy of Torah learning and living at Yeshiva University. I want to especially acknowledge my colleague, Rabbi Mark Penner, the director of rabbinic training at who has served as the chairman of the Chagas Mikla Committee. Rabbi Penner has demonstrated creativity, wisdom, and sensitivity in planning every aspect of this year's Chag HaSmicha program, together with his Vice Chairman, Rabbi Levi Mostovsky and Rabbi Eli Krimsky. <laughs> and the other dedicated members of the Chag HaSmicha Committee. There are so many others to thank, but I want to also single out for appreciation the longtime administrator of REITs, Rabbi Chaim Bronstein.
Rabbi Bronstein has worked with each and every musmach from the first day they began the smicha program until their very last requirement was duly negotiated. <laughs> and, and fulfilled. <laughs> and who epitomizes both the elements of thoroughness and human decency that are the hallmarks of the YU Smicha program. Our beloved Musmachim, today you formally assume the mantle of rabbinic leadership. Therefore, I want to sing you a song. The Gemara in Sanhedrin records that when Rabbi Zeira received smicha, ki samchua le Rabbi Zeira sharu lehachi. They sang a song to Rabbi Zeira. This is the same song, according to the Gemara in Suvos, that also is sung before a newlywed bride. Now, I don't know the music behind the song. I'll leave that to Cantor Beer and the Bell School professionals. But the lyrics of the song go as follows. The lyrics are, Lo kechal, velo shirak, velo pirchus, Meaning, that we do not need to adorn you in embellishing colors or exaggerated accolades. For v'yalas chen, your true colors of chen, of your charm, of your grace, of your favor, shine brightly enough on your rabbinic countenance. Today, you too radiate this innate charm, this chen that is exuded by a newly minted musmach, a presence that is sensible and accessible, caring and forbearing, accepting and respecting. Of course, as the Vilna Go notes, we say sheker achen, unless, of course, it is accompanied by yira Hashem hiti salal. Fortunately, we know in your case that your aschem kodemis l'chach moschem, that your proficiency in Torah is indeed only exceeded by your yira shemayim. I would like to suggest that this special chain that we celebrate today is manifested in four distinct ways. First, like the Aishas chain described in Sefer Mishle, like the chain that radiates from a wife to her husband based on his appreciation of her attentiveness to his needs, and of course, vice versa. So too, there is the chain that emanates from the rabbi who is attentive to the needs of his community. Along these lines, Rav Chaim Soloveitchik was once asked by Rabbi Meir Berlin, what is the role of the rabbi other than the obvious one of being steeped in Torah? You would have expected that Rav Chaim Briska would have responded by emphasizing the rabbi's responsibility to answer difficult questions of halacha or to provide stirring sermons to awaken sleeping souls. Instead, he responded that the rabbi's role is to provide for the needs of the community, to make sure that there are appropriate stucco organizations in place, that there are yeshiva ketano to educate the young, that the needs of the people are adequately addressed. Similarly, in his old age, Rav Chaim Ozer Grzynski, the great posek of Europe, in a conversation with the late Bolchein of our yeshiva, Rabbi Mendel Zaks, told Rabbi Zaks, and I quote directly from the Osco biography, When I was young, I learned that it was a great accomplishment to write an original Torah thought. Now, I see that it is a great accomplishment to make an elderly widow happy. While our main focus must always be on Talmud Torah, we are fortunate to have worked to perfect the rabbinical professional educational program component of the REITS curriculum. Through the instruction of experts in the fields of pastoral counseling, chaplaincy, public speaking in different areas of Jewish community life, you have become sensitized to both the needs of the community and the skills needed to be able to advocate effectively for those needs. Through the center of the Jewish future under the inspiring leadership of Rabbi Brander, you are able to actualize and implement those skills in the form of meaningful internships, training opportunities, and placements in positions of rabbinic leadership throughout the communities of North America and beyond. 
Through all these resources, you proudly embody the chen of those who are prepared to provide for the multifarious spiritual and material needs of our people. In addition to the chen that comes from giving, there is the chen born of humility, as the Pasuk says in Mishle, V'la'anavim yitain chen, God endows the humble with chen. This is the chen of the individual able to shine his countenance towards others precisely because he is not seeking the spotlight, the spotlight for himself. We are told by the Gemara Nidarim, Shilo Yomar Adam Eshneshi Karuni Rebbe. A student should not say, I will learn Torah in order to be called a rabbi. On the contrary, the Mishnah in Perke Yavos tells us, Sinasa Rabbanut, you should detest the rabbinate. The Bartanur explains, Sher Rabbanut Mekaveres is This is a profession that can bury you if you don't take the proper precautions. But don't worry. <laughs> the Teferis Yisrael explains that the mission is not discouraging the rabbinate as a profession, but rather is providing guidance on what is the proper attitude for those who are drawn to this higher calling. What you should detest and banish from your thoughts is any idea of lording your authority over the masses, of making the rabbinate a kardum lachporba, an axe with which to smash people, or even an atarali skadilba, a crown to bring glory and honor to yourself. It won't happen anyway. This type of attitude <laughs> can indeed wreak wreckage and devastation. Rather, says the Teferis Yisrael, Tinahalem verachamim ke'av levanov. Lead the people unselfishly and compassionately the way that a father gently instructs his children. Be a parnas, shemani gesatzibor benachas. A rabbi who, as the Gemara in Sanhedrin says, leads the people gently and kindly. This chain of humility goes hand in hand with the chain of being able to focus on the needs of the community. For you need to think not of what you can do for yourselves, but what you can do to help the poor, the needy, the oppressed, the vulnerable, and all those who are challenged or disadvantaged in society. A third type of chen is derived from the verse regarding the giving of the Torah. Sham Yisrael neged ahar. Literally, the children of Israel encamped opposite the mountain. From the word Vayichan, which is written in a singular form, Rashi tells us that the Jewish people were at that moment in time when they received the Torah, ki ishechad b'levechad, like one person with one collective spirit. Here too, Reb Yitzchak Mivorka understands the word Vayichan as kanoni chen, the chen that comes from achtus, of togetherness, the grace and charm that are exuded when you align yourself with the destiny of your people. For a model of this perspective of the rabbinate, we need look no further than Moshe Rabbeinu, from whom the institution of smicha derives. We just read in Parshas Kitisa that when Moshe descended with the luchos and saw that the people of Israel had sinned through the golden calf, he reacted by smashing the luchos at the foot of the mountain. The Kli Yaka makes an astonishing suggestion. He says that Moshe Rabbeinu smashed the luchos, you know why? In order to include himself in the sin of the people, so that he could more readily petition for collective forgiveness from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It is in this manner that the Kli Yaka understands the statement that was made by Moshe Rabbeinu when he declared that if the people could not be forgiven and he would be left on his own, Mecheni nam misifacha Moshe, as the quintessential leader, asked to be blotted out from the Torah rather than to abandon his people. Moshe Rabbeinu was committed first and foremost to the endurance of his nation. He quite literally was Moshe Nafsho al Yisrael, prepared to give himself up entirely for the sake of the Jewish people as the Kliyakar beautifully writes. And of course, it is about Moshe that the Torah recounts immediately afterwards, began matzasa chen be'enai. In this vein, remember that your job as a musmach in the tradition of Moshe Rabbeinu is to be a uniter as much as possible, not a divider. Your purpose is v'yalas chen, to radiate charm, not hostility. We adorn you with smicha not to cause unnecessary grief to others, but rather to gladden and uplift the hearts of the community. Avoid the temptations of lush and horror and disparaging others, even when it seems like it is l'shem shemayim. Like Moshe Rabbeinu, be prepared to blot yourself out, at least figuratively, 
for the greater cause of your people. Be Don't take your personal dignity too seriously. Show your strength and integrity by being prepared to suffer insult and denigration if necessary in your service of Hashem. On a related note, I caution you not to get carried away with titles. We give smicha today to all of you on an equal footing. We give you the English title of rabbi. It's good enough. In Hebrew, you can call yourselves Rav. But please don't waste your time deliberating over who is rabbi, who is Rav, who is Rebbe, who is Harav, who is Harav Agaon, who is Amush, who is Shlita, and so forth. As much as reasonable, give everybody the titles they feel they deserve but not in a fashion that would slight anybody else. As for yourselves, always settle for Gadol Meraban Shemo. Just make sure you maintain a well-deserved good name. It's hard enough. There is no better title than that. Finally, the Gemara Nerevin derives from the words V'yalaschein, Shemalaschein Alom Deha. The Torah endows charm upon those who learn it. There can be no true chen without diligent study of the Torah. All that you will accomplish through the chain of giving, the chain of humility, and the chain of identifying with the destiny of our people can only be sustained through a rigorous dedication to the continuous learning of Torah. You have been privileged to learn Torah from the most magnificent faculty of Russia, Yeshiva. proficiency in halacha, hashkafa, and learning Gemara Bi'iyun on the highest and most intense levels of Talmudic analysis. Your continued dedication to learning Torah will enable you to remain faithful to the values and principles of the Torah that you have learned and will continue to acquire. Remember as well that we are not saying goodbye to you today, and this is not only because many of you seem to have stayed around in the base medrash anyway. The base medrash here is indeed your permanent home. Your rebbeim here are your permanent rebbeim, and we view you as our permanent talmidim and now chaverim. You should not hesitate to consult regularly with your rebbeim to clarify how to apply Torah principles to the many challenging situations that you will encounter, and thereby maintain the kedusha of Torah in our communities. Through your dedication to learning and upholding the Torah, you will be able to serve as vital links in the chain of our sacred Misorah. In conclusion, I give you the blessing that you should never lose the viyala schein, the grace and charm that you possess today as new musmachim. Never diminish the chain of your excitement for learning and living Torah. Never discard the chain of your humility, even though you are truly great. And never forget as well that your success as a rabbi, as a rav, will be directly proportional to the chain that derives from your love of your people and your attentiveness to their needs. May you always merit to be nimtzachen v'seichel tov v'nei elokim v'adam. Mazel tov. It is now my honor to call upon someone who loves the yeshiva with his very heart and soul, the chairman of the Reed's Board of Trustees, Rabbi Julius Berman.
a member of the 50th anniversary class today to address us at this time. Before I begin, I request my fellow classmates of the Smirka class of 59 who are with us today to rise and be recognized. Approximately 50 years ago in this very room, Lampert, the keynote speaker of the Chag Smicha, being celebrated that year, commenced his address as follows. Chavirim Rashi Ayeshiva, Menali Ayeshiva, members from the board, Musmoche Ayeshiva, und Freund von der Musmochim, und Freund von der Yeshiva. And in this manner, our Rebbe, the Rabban Shal Yisrael, Marein of Rabbeinu, Rav Yosef Dov Halevi, Salavechik, Zeichet Sadek Lebracha, launched into another memorable presentation in which he delivered his charge to the Mismachim, encapsulating the role in which each of us should play as we go forward in life with the title of Musmach of Yeshivas Rabbeinu Yisrael Chanan, the rights pertaining to the position, as well as, at least equally important, the responsibilities that flow therefrom. Speaking both to and on behalf of the Musmachim who sat in this very room then, I cannot help but feel a wave of nostalgia envelop me as I look back to those days and years almost a lifetime ago. To my mind, even celebrating this year's Chag HaSemich in Lampert as Yeshiva has done throughout the years. It's symbolic of a past that has been integrated into our present and offers a roadmap for the future. For it was also in this room, Lampert, that we witnessed what I believe to have always been felt the most moving experience, indeed a spiritual experience of the school year. And that was the annual Yartzeit Shear by the Rav Zatzal on the day of the yard site of his father, Rav Moshe Halevi Salavechik Zatzal on Gimel Shvat. Those of us, those of you, sitting in this audience that had the schus of attending the shir will certainly understand and appreciate what I am saying. For those, and as time goes on, for the overwhelming majority of the audience sitting here and in the satellite locations who were not there, it is difficult to portray in words the event as we lived it year after year after year. Picture it, if you will. It is the evening of the third of Shvat. We are sitting here in Lamport awaiting the arrival of the Rav. Some of us have been sitting for hours, having come early to obtain seats as close as possible to the Rav. The auditorium is now packed and overflowing. Suddenly, as if an electric current has run through the room, the entire audience as one rises. The rub has entered the room. Sitting in front, we do not immediately see the rub, for he enters from the rear and must traverse the entire length of the auditorium to reach us. Everyone is standing, blocking our view, yet the feeling of his presence pervades the room. Finally, finally, the rub emerges from the crowd walking briskly, manuscript in hand, steps onto the stage and sits down behind an empty table to begin the shear. And the journey commences. The Rav, usually focusing on one or more halachas of the Rambam, 
ticks off one question after another that reflect obvious difficulties in the halacha, at least as they are obvious after the rub sets them out in its clear, lucid, and inimitable manner of exposition. Then after developing each of these questions, incomparable pedagogue that he is, he reviews in some reform all of them to assure that we understand the problems that will now be solved. That phase of the shear concluded, the Rav goes on to develop the Chiddush of the shear, navigating a plethora of passages in the Talmud, commentaries mostly Rishonim and others. We watch, listen, and many of us avidly write notes trying to keep up with the Rav's rapid fire delivery as he lays out the Chiddush brick by brick by brick, reconciling all the varied and seemingly contradictory texts. Now that the foundation has been set and the text reconciliation completed, the Rav returns to the original series of questions. Each is repeated and then almost summarily disposed of through application of the Chiddush one after the other. It is more than two hours later and the circuit has been completed. The first portion of the shear is concluded. The Rav now turns to the agudic portion of the shear, usually with a prefatory albeit a rhetorical question. Il wilt noch? The audience responds with a resounding yes, as the Rav embarks on another two-hour tour de force in his beautiful poetic Yiddish. We sit there entranced, swallowing every word. It is much more difficult now to take notes. In this portion of the year, we are overwhelmed, not only by the ideas and the concepts being presented, but also by the beauty of the language the choice and combination of words and phrases, the sheer poetry of the presentation, the masterful delivery, and of course, of course, the absolute brilliance of the speaker. We sit entranced. The sheer is entering the fifth, fifth hour. Finally, it is over. It takes us a while to return to reality, but perforce, we return. It was an unforgettable experience, one that we will carry with us the rest of our lives. We will relate the special privilege we lived through to our children and grandchildren, but we must acknowledge how ill-equipped we are to convey the feeling, the mood, indeed the exhilaration we felt at the time. And all that is now history. There are various customs surrounding the timing of the setting up and unveiling of the monument over a grave. In Jerusalem, the custom is to set the mo monument immediately after Shiva. In many other places, the custom is to wait until after the first yard site. Rabbi Kiv Eger explained the latter custom by pointing out that there is a generally ex accepted psychological phenomenon that the memory of a departed one fades after 12 months, so the monument is not needed as a remembrance until that point in time. From time to time, the Rav would point out during the yard site shear and otherwise that contrary to this psychological principle, as the years have gone by, his longing for his father had not diminished. Indeed, it had increased. What he would have given to have 15 minutes with his father to discuss some of the critical issues facing him. What we would give to have 15 minutes with the Rav, Marenu Rabbeinu, Satsal, to discuss the new issues that constantly crop up, even as recently as this year. But all we have now are our memories. Yet we hope to hold on to these memories, sharing them with those who are not privileged to learn with the Rav directly, reminding those of us whose lives were directly shaped by him of our debt and gratitude. And yet, lo alman Yisrael. Fortunately, the written record of the Rav's Torah has grown and grown and grown, almost exponentially. To cite but a few examples, over 10 volumes so far, the Rav's heretofore unpublished manuscripts have been published by the Rav's Family Foundation. Under the overall editorship of Rav Herschel Schechter Schlita and Rav Menachem Gnach Schlita, the Orthodox Union has published so far 24 issues of the periodical Mesorah containing the Rav's Kedushim and four volumes of Shiurei Harav. Five volumes so far of, Rish of Rishimo's Shiurei Harav by Rav Herschel Reichman Schlitter have been published. Machzorim for Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, Agada for Pesach, a Kinnis for Chiva, a Tisha Bob will be published very soon. Shortly thereafter, a Siddur, all with a commentary of the Rav. 
Egros agreed, Nefesh Arab, Pnini Arab, and more and more and more. Mamish Imayan Ainsof. And finally, and with this I will close, the ultimate legacy of the Rav is sitting right here on the stage. A core of Rosh Yeshiva for our institution that is second to none. I repeat, second to none. The very essence of our Yeshiva, <coughs> the best of the Torah world and the best of Torah Mada, almost all of whom are Talmidim of the Rav, and some of whom, as the generations have gone on, are Talmidim of Talmidim of the Rav, and thus Yeshiva is able to continue transmitting the legacy of the Rav. I am confident that I speak for all of you. Es asher yeshno po, veis asher neno po imono hayom, and especially the current musmachim who are at the center of today's event, when I say to our Russia yeshiva, schus hafotzas vachzokas ha-Torah togen aleichem, lisborich mimokar ha-brochas b'chol mili demeita, v'yirotzon shitiru ha-brocha v'atzlocha v'chol ha-meleichem u-mesir s'nafshechem, Lahagdil Torah ul Hadira on Maya Vesim Shana. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our first award recipient, Mr. Marvin Bienenfeld, will be presented by Rabbi Hyman Arbisfeld, the Vice President of the Reeds Board of Trustees. Mr. President, it is my privilege to present Mr. Bob Bienenfeld, who is a member of the Board of Trustees of REITs. And before that, he and I were classmates for seven years here at Yeshiva, and that's no small thing. <laughs> so it's my pleasure to present, to receive the Eitz Chaim Award, Marvin Bienenfeld. <laughs> The Eitz Chaim Award was created to acknowledge a Ben Torah who has dedicated his life to advancing Jewish scholarship and the Jewish people in ways extraordinary. The Eitz Chaim Award was created for Marvin Bienenfeld. Marvin, you give uh, meaning to my term Lei Kodesh. Always a son of yeshiva, you completed your studies at Yeshiva College in 1953 and received smicha in 1956. Today, you serve as a trustee of both the university and the yeshiva, a remarkable continuum of learning and leading. Your Eishas Chayel Hadassah, a graduate of Yeshiva's Teachers Institute for Women and an overseer of Stern College is a life force unto herself and supercharges the life that you lead together. Thrust into the business world at a young age, your acute business acumen enabled you to direct your company with grace and skill. Your success in this realm offered you the opportunity to fulfill your true passion of supporting the education of tomorrow's Jewish people. Marvin, you and Dasi raised your children to learn and love and live Torah values. Indeed, your whole family has invested themselves in yeshiva. Your son Morris and daughter Joanne both matriculated at yeshiva's undergraduate schools. Many of your grandchildren passed through our halls, and your grandson is a driving force today at the Israeli Graduate School of Jewish Education and Administration. Not shabby so far, Marvin. <laughs> Through your vision and commitment to your beloved parents, you established the Morris and Gertrude Bienenfeld Department of Jewish Career Development at the Yeshiva, which has placed our musmachim through your efforts around the world and guided them to build communities dedicated to Torah and striving for a brighter future. Your passion for Jews worldwide has led you to support a litany of worthwhile organizations and initiatives both in America and Israel, including the Amit Bienenfeld Chavruta Yeshiva and Kolel in Ra'anana, chairing American Friends of Yeshivot Bnei Akiva, and your serving as director of the Orthodox Union. 
While some may call you soft-spoken, your actions and the actions of your family speak loudly. You have shared your wealth and your wisdom with us, selflessly focused on advancing Jewish life. You've dedicated yourself to ensuring that lives of value and values emerge from this yeshiva and from these halls. For your dedication and devotion, your modesty and menschlichkeit, and your friendship and your fortitude, it is my great honor to confer upon you on behalf of the yeshiva the Eitz Chaim Award. Marvin, Marvin, take your award. Take your award. The same, it's the same thing I just read. <laughs> I had to prepare early because they wanted this for the inscription, so I won't read it again. So. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Marvin Bienem. Thank you, President Joel. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be here this morning and share the podium with such distinguished Rabbanim and Mitzbachim. It is especially heartwarming to look out and see an auditorium filled with young rabbis, teachers, educators, communal workers, and others who will carry the banner of Yeshiva University and Yeshiva's Rabbeinu Yitzhak al into the future and serve as leaders and role models for the next generation. <clears throat> In the few minutes allotted to me this morning, I'd like to share with you one thought, which I hope brings together this wonderful Chag and, pers and persons such as myself, who are mismachim of our Yeshiva, but chose not to enter the world of the rabbinate. We are all familiar with the concept of Yisachar and Zebulun. In blessing his children before his death, Yaakov Avinu says in Parshas Vayechi, Zebulun lechof yamim yishkon, v'hu lechof onios, Yaakov so al tzidon. Yisachar chamar gorem, roveis bein hamishtofayim. Vayar menucha kito, vesorez kino aimo, Rashi commenting on this post says, Similarly in Parshas, Vezos HaBrocha, Moshe Rabbeinu blesses the Shvotim and says, Smach Zvulim B'Tzeitzecha, V'Yesocha V'Ohalecha. Here Rashi, Quoting Bracious Rabbah says, Zebulun v'yesocha osu shutfus. Zebulun lechof yamim yishkom v'yotze lefrat maktiyo v'sfino su mishtaker. V'nosein l'tol piv shal yesocha v'heim yoshvim v'oskim batora. L'ficho higdim zebulun l'yesocha sh'etoroso shal yesocha ayyedei zebulun hoysa. Rashi categorizes the relationship between Yisachar and Zebulun as a shutfus, as a partnership. Zebulun would go out into the world of commerce and hopefully generate profits and support Yisachar, who would sit and learn. What kind of partnership does Rashi mean? What did Zebulun receive in return for his support of Yisachar? The common understanding and one which is much quoted by fundraisers is, the, is that Zebulun receives a share in the Sakhar of Yisachar for sitting and learning. Rav Asherais gives a different explanation, the which I believe is an appropriate rush for this morning and for me. Rav Weiss explains that the partnership referred to Rashi is not a business arrangement in which Zebulun, in essence, buys his olam abor from Yisachar. Rather, he says, it is a partnership in learning. By supporting Yisachar and enabling him to learn, it is as if Zebulun himself is sitting next to him in the base medrash and learning. This partnership, this chavrusa, carries with it benefits and the responsibilities of a chavrusa. As we all know, and I'm sure you all know, our Chavrusa is our partner, and we could not succeed in learning 
without a chavrusa. On that note, I would like to be makir tov and personally thank my chavrusa during the years of the yeshiva. Rabbi Eric Gelman Zatzal, and Yibuad Elachayim, Rabbi Jason Jacobowitz. That is, and it should always be, the feeling and obligation of Musmachim and supporters of our yeshiva. We are partners with yeshiva in our learning, and in a sense, a chavrusa as well. Although the Chag HaSmichu represents our moving on and leaving the Kosle Beis HaMedrash, whether it is to be the rabbinate or any other career of your choosing, our bond with yeshiva, our bond with Achavrusa, must always remain. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our next award recipient, Rabbi Dr. Herbert C. Dabrinsky, will be presented by Harav Zavulin Chalap, Dean Emeritus of the Rabbi Isaac Ochanan Theological Seminary. President Joel, I am delighted to present a good friend for over 50 years, and a proud colleague for nearly that long, Dr. Herbert C. Dobrinsky, Vice President for University Affairs for Yeshiva University, for the Harav Yosef Dov Halevi Salavechik Aluf Torah Award. As the son of a tailor, you did not choose to go into your father's profession, but you learned a great deal from his trade. For close to 50 years, you have been sewing and weaving together the tapestry of the Jewish community here at Yeshiva University and through that worldwide. Your studies with the Rav color your worldview arming you with an unquenchable drive to ensure that more and more young people would come to sew the same designs. You came to Yeshiva University High School for Boys in 1948 from Montreal and have maintained your connections with us ever since. After earning your bachelor's degree from Yeshiva College, smicha from our Yeshiva, and your doctorate from Furkauf, you've spent the rest of your life ceaselessly dedicated to enriching the Jewish people through Torah-infused education. Through your relentless love for YU and what it stands for, and the yeshiva and what it stands for, you have devoted your time and energy to sharing our mission with others. Through your unique fusion of passion and professionalism, you have pursued anyone and everyone who could, anyone and everyone, who could lend support to yeshiva. In fact, he looks forward to greeting each one of you later and giving you incomparable opportunities to partner with him. <laughs> While always maintaining, always maintaining a profound sense of respect and dignity, you've spent your life spreading the values of Torah and our yeshiva to a world in need of inspiration and direction. The examples are myriad. From your early days at the Community Service Division, you have worked to build programs like the B'nai Hillel Honor Society, which you inducted a 12-year-old named Richard into, Camp Marasha, Torah Leadership Seminar. You have helped place over 400 rabbis in pulpits around the world. Your work with the Sephardic community has been ceaseless, both from an intellectual and academic point of view and from a community growth point of view. You penned a treasury of Sephardic laws and customs, the most comprehensive work on this subject. Even as you helped 
sustain and increase the yeshiva family, you, together with your wonderful wife, Dina, have raised a model Jewish family. Yeah, you have. Among your three children, 13 grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren, most have or will one day be products of a yeshiva university education. And it shouldn't go without noting that on this day, as we honor you, perhaps the best honor we can give you is that your son-in-law, Michael Kramer, after 32 years, has completed his smicha studies <laughs> and is in the smicha class today. and grandchildren who currently learn Torah here. Through your lifetime of achievement at Yeshiva, you have served three presidents so far. Dr. Belkin, Dr. Lamb, and me. During, so far. During this time, you have never not been our rabbi, always offering counsel, guidance, and yashras. The Rav said, quote, the password of the Jew is chesed, kindness, compassion to his fellow Jews and to his fellow man. The Jew must share in the destiny of his people and be concerned with the destiny of mankind, unquote. How fitting in every way to confer upon you the Harav Yosef Dov Halevi Salavechik Aluf Torah Award on behalf of your yeshiva. Mazel tov. Rishus Hanasi, the president of REITS and YU, Richard Joel, to whom I'm so grateful for that magnificent presentation. Rishus the Rosh HaYeshiva and Chancellor of Yeshiva University, Rabbi Norman Lamb. Rishus Rabbi Yona Ries, the Dean of REITS and Rav Zvulun Kharlap who I was honored to be presented by today, pursues the Rosh Yeshiva, the lifeblood of our Yeshiva, the Gedole Torah, who imbue us with the love of Torah and the ability to appreciate its value. And with you, my classmates who celebrate our 50th anniversary, Mazel Tov to each and every one of you and your families, and mazel tov to all the 200 musmachim with whom I share this glorious day, especially to have the zechus to stand alongside my longtime friend and someone whom I have always admired because he is a rav. He's not Mr. Marvin. He's Rav Marvin Bienenfeld, who is a rabbi who teaches the laity how to be a functional and meaningful rabbi in the Jewish community. It's a great zechus to be together with him and Dr. Henry Crissell, the chairman of the board of Yeshiva University, and Rabbi Julius Berman, the chairman of the REITS board. Ruchim haba'im, welcome to all of you, and especially to the many generous benefactors and donors of Yeshiva who help us to make this yeshiva what it is today and enable us to be able to produce such an historic occasion. Kotonti mikol hachosodim mikolo emes asher osiso es avodecho. My merits have been diminished as a result of the kindness and the truths that you have enacted on my behalf. I am humbled beyond words to be counted among the three predecessors who've received this lofty recognition. And I hope I become deserving of that recognition in the time ahead. In the areas where I have been blessed with some measured support, in my service to REITS, to Yeshiva University, to the Jewish community, I would not want anyone to think that I claim these successes for myself as mine alone. 
Rather, they were achieved together with the help and leadership of many colleagues, support of great leaders in the Jewish community. And they have helped make Yeshiva University and REITS the institution that it deserves to be recognized as the foremost such institution in the world. Therefore, each and every one of those who have participated together with me are to a very large degree equally the recipients of this unique award that I am privileged to receive today in the name of the Rob, Rabbi Yosef Dov Halevi Soloveshik Tzatzal, who was and remains the source of my inspiration during his lifetime and since then, when his name and our institution's name have been inextricably interwoven in the hearts and minds of the Torah community and the world at large. I was often privileged to interact with the Rav in my professional pursuits and had been able not only to learn from his Torah, from his scholarship, but to witness how he made its practical application in solving and resolving so many of the challenges and problems that we in the Community Service Division faced in the Jewish community. And I remember so clearly when he joined ranks with Rabbi Lam in rallying the leadership of our yeshiva during times of great financial distress. And he said that it was because of our yeshiva that he felt that his own position in the world was so significantly recognized. And if it would, God forbid, the fault, we would have to rebuild it at a much higher cost if Torah was to persist in America and throughout the world. I am so grateful to the memory of Rabbi Dr. Shmuel Belkin, who served for 33 years as the leader of our institution, who during the last five years of his presidency, it was my privilege to serve as his executive assistant. And I remain ever grateful to Rabbi Dr. Norman Lamb for the friendship and the direction that he gave me during his 27 years as president and continues to provide as the Rosh HaYeshiva and Chancellor of our university. And currently, it is a great tzichus to have the privilege to serve in the administration of my dear, cherished friend, Richard M. Joel, the great president of Yeshiva University and REITS, who has brought Yeshiva to another level, building upon the past of his predecessors. I am deeply privileged to have served as well under the Chacham, Rabbi Dr. Solomon Gaon, who was then Chief Rabbi of the Sephardic Jews of the British Commonwealth and came to spend at least a month a year for many, many years, spending the last 12 years as Professor of Sephardic Studies, for it was he who imbued me with a love for and an understanding of Sephardic Jewry that brought me to work to provide for its needs in our time. When Hashem said in the Torah, Ozov Tazov Imo, he demonstrated that the heavy lifting in life is rarely achieved alone without the assistance of others. In addition to all my colleagues who were helpful to me, the single greatest source of partnership came from Ayesha Schail my beloved wife, Dina Lovenberg Dobrinsky, and our children, Deborah, Tova, and Aaron, and theirs, the sacrifices they so often made by accepting the absence of their husband and father, who more often than not was preoccupied with the service of the community and yeshiva instead of being with them even on special occasions. Without their understanding, I could not possibly have fulfilled my many obligations. In expressing my gratitude to Dina, I apply a phrase from the famous Talmudic epic describing Rabbi Akiva and his wife, Rachel, the daughter of Kalba Sabua, 
when he declared for all to hear publicly, Sheli v'shelachem, shelahi, that which is mine and that which is yours is all because of her. To all of you, Musmachim, I say these words by way of showing the right way, and I hope that you will cherish and value the partners in life, your closest ones, your most intimate ones, and your partners in the community who will enable you to achieve your noble goals. Yehi ratzon shetishresh china v'masei yedechem. Amen and mazel tov. Give you a plaque. Give you a plaque. Oh, okay. uh, all yours. Finally, it is my privilege to call upon Rabbi Adir Posey, representative of the Smicha class, member of the Judaic Studies faculty at Yeshivat Rambam in Baltimore, Maryland an assistant rabbi for Congregation Beth Jacob in Beverly Hills, California. We have no idea how he's doing both. <laughs> Who will offer the Dvar Torah on behalf of the class. Rabbi Posey. Gershus Kvod Rabosai, President Joel, Rabbi Lam, Rabbi Reese, Rabbi Charlap, Roshe Yeshiva, and fellow Musmachim. And of course, all of those who have traveled from near and far, it's a special honor to address you this morning. A few years ago, I had this chus of being in the audience at my wife's medical school graduation. Near the end of the program, they also had a student speaker. He got up and shared his greatest fear. He told the assembled audience that what scared him more than anything was the fact that after the ceremony, he had to get on a plane. And from that day on, he would have to answer if a flight attendant got on the intercom and asked, is there a doctor in the house? And sitting there in the audience, I reflected that perhaps if I were getting on a plane after my Chag HaSmicha, what would I say if they got in the intercom and asked, is there a rabbi in the house? And I took a small measure of comfort that if that's what they were asking for, we were in much bigger trouble. But the bottom line is that the fear, the fear is a real one. Recently, psychologists coined a term that I have to tell you very much describes my personal experience, perhaps shared by my colleagues, my fellow musmachim. I personally came across this term in a pastoral psychology class taught by Dr. Pelkovitz in a classroom right down the street where so many of us have gained so much. The term is called the imposter syndrome. The syndrome reflects a phenomenon often applied to recent graduates, where you step into a new role. You're supposed to be a professional, a therapist, a teacher, a scholar, or a rav, which is supposed to be all of the above, plus much more. You step into this role where everyone assumes that you are a qualified professional. You are the rabbi. And you know that as a Ritz Musmach, you have been given better than world-class training. And yet, you're consumed by the question, am I really ready? And even worse, are they going to figure me out? The truth is that none of us are the first to feel this apprehension. As we heard so beautifully 
Moshe Rabbeinu was called to a sneh and given a charge to become a teacher, a leader, a rav. And perhaps today, many of us feel a special connection to Moshe, who showcased similar discomfort before stepping into his leadership role. He also turned to Hashem, asking, Mi anochi? And he was concerned about being a kvad peh and a kvad lashon, thinking and worrying of eich yishma elai. How would the leaders of the world and the leaders of my people hear me and see me? For me, this syndrome was intensified during smicha, when I would go out into the field and see the sheer power of what we can accomplish. I would go into the world and see my rabbeim and mentors hard at work. I'd watch our beloved Rosh Yeshiva take what to me were just words on a page and turn it into a sugya. I would see a mentor walk into a shiva house and suddenly it was a shiva home. I would watch some of our greatest leaders, many of whom are in this room today, take what may have appeared as a disjointed amalgamation of people and turn it into a community. I saw people, my family, my wife, and this illustrious yeshiva to whom all of us are forever indebted. I saw them take a boy named Adir Posey, make him into a man, a ben Torah, and eventually a rav. So for some of us, it was over the past four years. For other of us, it may be tomorrow morning when we are the ones who need to step into the shiva home, the classroom, or the sugya. And yes, we may wonder whether we have what it takes. But the answer to our worries, the antidote to our fears, lies in the answer HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave to Moshe in that sneh so many years ago. Hashem gave him a promise that is some of the most enduring divrei chizuk ever delivered. Hashem told him, and each and every day is telling us, that there would be two things that would always be by Moshe's side through thick and thin. The first is Anochi Eheyeimach, Siyata Dishmaya. Hashem's constant presence would follow Moshe every step of the way. And who among us in this room or on this webcast have not felt the clear and explicit Yad Hashem every step we progressed along this journey? What better example is there than our spiritual mentors, our Rosh Yeshiva, who not only helped train us, but will be continuing as a rock of support in whatever endeavors we attempt. The second promise Hashem made to Moshe was that he would never go it alone. Aaron achicha yien viecha, we will always have a support system. For Moshe Rabbeinu, it was his brother Aaron. And for us, it is the immense constellation of support that made today possible. It's our families, our parents and in-laws, wives and children, grandparents, siblings and friends, who are looking at us today with pride and hope for the future. It's the incredible dedication and self-sacrifice of all of the REITs administration and staff who painstakingly crafted our time here into an unparalleled training and growth experience. It's the generosity of the donors and Machzike Torah who have put forth the financial resources to make our experience not only financially viable, but truly first rate. And it's the long hours and genuine caring of Marco and the calf who made sure we ate our vegetables and Luis Taveras and Lopez from security, who always made sure we were in a safe and secure Makom Torah. And perhaps most of all, it's each other. It's the incredible chevreshaft that we created during our time in yeshiva. And that incredible rock of support, which will also be with us wherever we may be, 
And when we come back to this room for the anniversary of our Chag HaSmicha. So now, now we reflect. We reflect on that awesome responsibility to not just avoid being an imposter, but to be a proactive, tireless advocate for Riboy Kvod Shamayim. We look around the room today and we revel in the incredible amount of time and faith invested in each and every one of us. We reflect on the vision of Rabbi Dr. Lamb, President Joel, and Rabbi Charlap, the leadership of Rabbi Reese and Rabbi Brander, and so many others like them. And we recognize what we have been given the tools to do. And yes, of course, it's an overwhelming responsibility to comprehend. But we remember Hashem's promise. And we take comfort in that chizuk and support that, it guides, that has guided us so far and will always be with us wherever and whatever we do. It's this support of our community and our beloved yeshiva that we know helps us step onto the shoulders of the incredible Rabbanim honored today. It's this support that reminds us that we are the bearers of a sacred misora, the vanguard of Yiddishkeit for the next generation, whether we feel ready or not. For as we all know, it may not be on an airplane as we leave Lamport Auditorium, but there are classrooms, and there are shuls, and there are factories and hospital rooms, and communities, and Gans Klal Yisra. From Bulgaria to Baltimore, from New Zealand to New York, from Bayad Fagan to Beverly Hills, who are all asking, is there a rabbi in the house? And Baruch Hashem, there are now over 200 more people in this room who have been given the tools, the support, and the siyat of the to answer the call. Mazel tov, and thank you to all of you. Mr. President, I am delighted to call upon Rabbi Yona Reese, the Max and Marion Grill Dean of the Rabbi Isaac Ochanan Theological Seminary, to present the Musmachim. It is our privilege at this time to invite each Musmach to the stage to be congratulated by the Rosh HaYeshiva, the President, myself, and the Rosh HaYeshiva. It is my pleasure to call upon Rabbi Chaim Bronstein, the Administrator of the Rabbi Isaac Ochanan Theological Seminary, to call the first group of names. We begin with four Rabbanim who have received Yad and Yad and Smicha, which is awarded to those Talmidim who have previously received the traditional Yara Yara Smicha and have now earned an additional Smicha in Jewish jurisprudence after studying for numerous years in our Kola Lahora under the tutelage of its Roshay Kola, Rabbi J. David Black and Rabbi Mordechai Willick. Rabbi Bronstein. Harav Binyamin Gidon Halevi Kelson. Harav Michael Zilberman. Harav Ezra Yair Schwartz. Moshe Yaakov Adler. We have, we have now just begun to call upon the largest class of Yara Yara Musmachim in the history of Yeshua Rabbeinu Yitzchok Elchanan. Rav Ranan Eliezer Amster. David Shlomo Asher, Harav Yonasan Chaim Ozabel, 
Rav Moshe Eliyahu Azabel, Rav Kusiel Chaim Axelrod, Rav Yaron Meir Barish, Rav Azriel Levi Beer, Rav Akiva Yona Block, Rav Avi Menachem Bloom, Rav Elio Belizan, Rav Shalom Yako Boyanju. Rav Elisha Basileli, Rav Ephael Noach Bender, Rav Avram Dovey Bookbinder, Rav Baruch Dov Brown, Rav Yehuda Tritol Brand, Rav Abigail Chaitavsky, Rav Yonasan Yisrael Chambray, Rav Yehuda Elimelech Shanelis, Rav Eliezer Rapola Cohen Cohen, Rav Yonas and Yaakov Cohen Cohen, Rav Shlomo Yidol Label Dachman, Rav Baruch Tzvi Danziger, Rav Michael Zalman Davies, Rav Asher Gabriel Dardik, Rav Yeshua Menachem Dredzi. Rav Shaul Leib Epstein, Rav Gershon Tzvi Eisenberger, Rav Eitan Meir Eisen, Rav Aaron Zay Feigenbaum, Rav Eliyahu Chaim Nata Farkas, Rav Yaman Yechestel Halebi Epstein, Rav Uri Yechiel Feintach, Rav Yitzhak Abraham Fried, Rav Yona Feldman, Rav Ari Nassan Feldman, Rav Dovi Fisher, Rav Yona San Shimon Fox, Rav Ephraim Yechiel Glatt, Rav David Abraham Goldfisher, Rav Yoshua Shlomo Galler, Rav Ephraim Yosef Goldman, Rav Yona Naftali Gross, Rav Yona San David Grossman, Rav Yaakov Shlomo Gutenberg, Rav Yeshaya Hanoch Gutenberg, Rav Yosef Menachem Golden. It's now my great pleasure to call upon Rabbi Eli Krimsky of the, of the Center for the Jewish Future to continue the name. Rav Ariel Yaakov Goldberg, Rabbi Ariel Goldberg. Rav Menachem Arye Gilchinsky, Rabbi Arye Gilchinsky. Rabbi Victor Geriani, Rav Chaim Geriani. Rav Michal Aaron Goldstein, Rabbi Michael Goldstein. Rav Avram Eliezer Grunberger, Rabbi Avram Grunberger. Rav Rafael David Holkauer, Rabbi Rafael Holkauer. Rabbi David Hellman, Rav David Eliyahu Hellman. Rabbi Evan Hoffman, Rav Yechil Yisrael Hoffman. Rav Yair Zev Hinden, Rabbi Yair Hinden. Rav Yosef Moshe Hirsch, Rabbi Joe Hirsch. Rabbi Alan Huben, Rav Avram Mordechai Cohen Huben. Rabbi Yoshua Leib Irons, Rabbi Leib Irons. Rabbi Shimshon Eliyahu Yaakov, Yaakov, Rabbi Shimshon Jacob. Rabbi Nathanael Javaski, Rabbi Nathanael Javaski. Rabbi Asher Klein, Rabbi Asher Zalman Klein. Rabbi Avi Kalimnik, Rabbi Avi Yecheskel Alevi Kalimnik. Rabbi Daniel Maimon Halevi Crow, Rabbi Daniel Crow. Rav Aaron Rafal Zelaga Cohen Katz, Rabbi Aaron Katz. Rav Shimon Kleinbart, Rabbi Simon Kleinbart. Rav Nohorai Halevi Nocton, Rav Eric Nocton, Katkin. Rav Akiva Konigsberg, Rabbi Akiva Konigsberg. 
Rabbi Aaron Don Kraft, Rabbi Aaron Kraft. Rabbi Michael Kramer, Rabbi Michal Kramer. Rabbi Aaron Kaplan, Rabbi Aaron Moshe Elia Kaplan. Rabbi Stephen Kroll, Rabbi Shmuel Aryeh Kroll. Rabbi Zalman Kronengold, Rabbi Daniel Kronengold. Rabbi Brian Kinsbrenner, Rabbi Baruch Benzion Kinsbrenner. Rabbi Yaakov Eli Melech Levin, Rabbi Jacob Lewin. Rabbi Aaron David Liebtag. Rabbi Aaron Liebtag. Rabbi Yoni Levin, Rabbi Yonatan Binyamin Halevi Levin. Rabbi Hanan Liss, Rabbi Hanan Yisrael Liss. Rabbi Ian Lichter, Rabbi Shlomo Rachiel Lichter. Rabbi Adam Law, Rabbi Adam Michal Law. Rabbi Avram Leib, Rabbi Aaron Leib. Rabbi Meir Lipschitz, Rabbi Meir Eli Melech Lipschitz. Rabbi Meir Newman, Rabbi Baruch Meir Newman. Rabbi Michael Lipschitz, Rabbi Michal Noam Lipschitz. Rabbi Philip Moskowitz, Rabbi Gavriel Pinchas Moskowitz. Rabbi Eli Kohl, Rav Yitzchak Eliezer Cohen, Kohl. Rabbi Eliezer Aaron Michel, Rabbi Eliezer Michel. Rabbi Andrew Markowitz, Rav Avram Eliezer Markowitz. Rav Avram Leiv Malka, Rabbi Andrew Malka. Rabbi Sariel Malitsky, Rav Sariel Yaakov Malitsky. Rabbi Michael Nadada, Rav Michal Yoshua Nadada. Rabbi Ryan Newfield, Rav Ruve Newfield. Rabbi Josh Podolsky, Rav Yoshua Chaim Podolsky. Rabbi Umberto Piperno, Rav Avram Piperno. Rabbi Mati Pavlak, Rav Metesyahu Pavlak. Rabbi Adir Posey, Rav Adir Yehuda Posey. Rabbi Asher Nemes, Rav Asher Avram Alevi Nemes. Mazel tov, nice to see you. Rav Kalman Shmuel Palak, Rabbi Kenneth Palak. Gives me great privilege and honor to introduce my colleague and friend of the Center for the Jewish Future, Rabbi Levi Mostovsky, who will announce the rest of the Musmachim and our Musmachim in Eretz Yisrael. Rav Yonason Moshe Poznik. Harav Simcha Bunim Rimler Ben Dov. Harav Avram Shmuel Rubinson. Harav Moshe Yitzchak Rocklin. Harav Menachem Mendel Rutman. Harav Ephraim Meir Rudolph. Harav Tzvi Elimelech Rosenthal. Harav Uriel Rabinovich. Harav Rafal Micha Rosenblum. Harav Menashe Dov Halevi Rosen. Harav Nochem Uriel Reback. Harav Mishulam Shogav Fivish Raps. Harav Yoram David Rosenberg. Harav Binyamin Menachem Reznik. Harav Ephraim Shimon Salhenik. Harav Simcha Arye Shaum. Harav Yosef Michal Schwartzbaum. Harav Ariel Tzvi Hakohen Shaket. Harav Moshe Eliezer Shore. Harav Ariel Chaim Schwartzberg. Harav Arye Spiegler. Harav Eitan Avigdor Chaim Shnal. Harav Shmuel Yaakov Siegel. Harav Yaakov Sasson. Harav Shmuel Elon Sonaker. Harav Yigal Leib Sklarin. 
Harab Tzvi Sinensky. Harab Arye Yehoshua Ziskind. Harab Matisyao Yecheskel Shulman. Harab David Gedalia Sukenik. Harab Moshe Stavsky. Harav Yitzchak Aaron Levy Schiff. Harav Rami Ephraim Strasberg. Harav David Shabtai. Harav Simi Simcha Chaim Shabtai. Harav Avram Moshe Teicher. Harav Yitzchak Binyamin Tertel. Harav Yehuda Yosef Tzvi Turetsky. Harav Mordechai Shmuel Turaf. Harav Avraham Tanev. Harav Yehuda Meir Weinstein. Harav Binyamin Mendel Weinberg. Harav Naftali Weiss. Harav Yisrael Tzviya Cohen Wallach. Harav Iron Mayor Zuckerman. Harav Avram Chaim Yehuda Halevi Weintraub. Harav Akiva Shmuel Walk. Harav Matan Yoshua Wexler. Harav Eliyahu Moshe Wolf. Harav Simcha Willig. Harav Eitan Shmuel Zeriker. Harav Mordechai Shalom Zauder. Harav Oren Moshe Zweider. Harav Ephraim Mordechai Zlatnik. Harav Naftali Moshe Wolf. Harav Adam Felsenthal. Harav Yosef Leib Yisrael Akoin Zalish. Another Musmach of Yadin Yadin or of Yochanan Marzov. We will now read the names of our Musmachim gathered at the Yeshiva University Israel campus. The photographs you will see were taken just a short while ago at the reception in Israel. Or of Daniel Rosenfeld. Or of Hillel Rudolph. Harav Elichai Bitter. Harav Pinchas Sanders. Harav Rami Goldberg. Harav Yoshua Cantor. Harav Tzvi Zev Herman. Harav Yisrael Mishulm Shraga Fivish Bloom. Harav Erez David. Harav Naftali Chaim Lavenda. Harav Shalom Yitzhak Ozerovsky. Harav Moshe Yaakov Adler. And Harav Yonasan Svi Ari Cohen.
Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in wishing Mazel Tov to all of our Musmachem. Just a few moments. Please be seated for just one more second. In just a few moments at the conclusion of the ceremony, we will proceed outside to dance on Amsterdam Avenue with our new musmachen. Please give your close attention to the Herald, Dr. Davis, for further instructions in just a moment. Please listen closely. After the dancing, the musmachem and ticketed guests are invited to a reception in the Max Stern Athletic Center. And there, as they're about to leave, each musmach will receive a number of gifts, including a special set, a box set of two Haggadot, an exalted evening, prepared by Rabbi Menachem Ganak with the insights of Harav Soloveitchik, and the royal table, a new Haggadah by our Rosh HaYeshiva, Rabbi Lamb. Before we conclude, I simply must thank a number of people who have helped make this day possible. To my talented co-chairs, Rabbi Levi Mostovsky and Eli Krimsky of the CJF, for your wisdom and creativity. To Karen Simon for her work with the rabbinic alumni. To Don Summers and all the staff at security, thank you very much. <laughs> to Steve Schloss, Hetty Shulman, and everyone at Communications for their brilliant and diligent work in creating a real Kiddush Hashem leading up to this event. <laughs> to Yair and Frank and all the poor souls at Productions who made all of the signs that you have seen in more than a hundred schools and shuls, the banners that you see on the wall, all to give cover to the yeshiva. Thank you so much. <laughs> to Vice President Rosengarten and Joe Shatoff and everyone at Facilities for their wisdom and phenomenal work setting up the campus. It's such a beautiful day today here. Thank you very much. <laughs> to our partners at the CJF, and the Institute for University School Partnership, who helped us run almost 30 events in shuls and schools around the country preceding the Chag Asmicha, to Rabbis Leibowitz, Rockoff, and Moskowitz, to Dudi Miller, Jordan Rosenberg, and especially to Rabbi Yoni Levin. 
and to all of the Rosh Yeshiva who gave of their time and wisdom speaking around the country before the Chag HaSmicha. <laughs> to our partners in Eretz Yisrael, first of all, a tremendous thank you to Harav Aaron Lichtenstein and to Rav David Miller for coming in and joining with us. <laughs> to Mark Lerman, the director of Yeshiva University in Israel, who helped take all of the photographs and with so many details of the Schaga Smicha. Thank you, Mark, very much. <laughs> to Eliza Berenholtz and to Mike Scagnoli and the events team, who went so far beyond what we could have been entitled to expect, and without whom we can truly say this celebration would not have come together. Thank you, Eliza and Mike, for everything we have today. <laughs> to Rabbi Bacon, to Rabbi Bronstein, the entire staff of REITs, thank you. And I'd also like, before I conclude, to wish Hakar Satov to Rabbi Robert Hurt. After preparing this event for the past year, my respect for you and what you have given in yeshiva has grown and grown. We thank you, Rabbi Hurt, for running this event for decades. And I thank you for your advice and support. Thank you very much, Rabbi Hurt. And finally, there's not a single person in this room who doesn't know who the last person is that I have to thank, because everyone has spoken to her at some point in the last six months. This event came together because of Fagalea Brisman. And we are so thankful to you for making this possible. And finally, to the Ribbona Shalom, to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who has shown us incredible siyata dishmaya by bringing us spring two weeks early so we could dance outside in the worst winter in New York's history and has given us siyat dishmai in every step of the event. To the musmachim, please know, as Rabbi Rees mentioned, that we are here for you, your Rosh Yeshiva are here for you, and the vast resources of the Center for the Jewish Future. And it's Gertrude and Morris Bienenfeld, Department of Jewish Career Placement, are here to guide you in every single step of your journeys. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join in the singing of Hatikva, which will be led by Rabbi Moshe Tesson, director of the YU Sephardic Community Program of Yeshiva University and member of the faculty of the Philip and Sarah Bell School of Jewish Music of Reitz. Oh, she bears it. 